Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I'm gonna keep it short and simple today. It is early as can be in the morning, and uh, I'm just ready to get this video rolling. Recently, I did a couple prints working on a little project of mine. I'm working on a um, variable speed DC motor project. So it's supposed to create some lift. Show the kids how lift moves this up and down like that. Something simple. But one thing I noticed is that my prints weren't at the measurements that I thought they were being. In order for you guys to be able to do this little uh, calibration, if you will, you're gonna need something that is already calibrated. I mean, you can use it with a ruler, it's just not gonna be as precise. I'm just going to use simple algebraic math uh, to solve this uh, calibration issue that I have going on right now. And hopefully uh, that will solve the problem. But I've never done this before, so you guys will be learning along with me. So the first thing we need to do is create a reference print. That is a print that we know what the measurements are supposed to be so we can figure out how much we need to adjust the printer by. We're gonna use a cube for that. Um, it needs to be a small cube so that your prints in between each adjustment don't take too long because otherwise you're gonna be there all day in between adjustments. Unless you have time, you can make bigger cubes. The bigger the cubes, the more accurate your measurements could be because there is more noticeable percentage of error. However, um, a 20 by 20 by 20 millimeter cube will be fine, okay? You can use whatever measurement you want. Just remember, don't keep it too big. Keep it medium size. If you do it too small, your margin of error is gonna be not as noticeable, so uh, you don't wanna do that either, okay? But first, this lab is a mess, all right? So, I just need to clean this real quick and then we can get started, all right? So, the first thing you wanna do is um, open up your 3D printing, creating software. Uh, for me, it is my uh, handy dandy Fusion 360. Fusion 360 is now open. The first thing you wanna do is create a sketch, choose a plane. I'm just gonna choose a random plane because it doesn't really matter. We're making a cube and it's gonna be similar on all sides. So there we go. We're on the top plane and we're just gonna go ahead and click on that two point rectangle and go ahead and click right here. So you wanna make a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter square. There we go. And now we have a 20 by 20. Next thing you wanna do is click on finish sketch. You wanna extrude it, which means make the 2D shape into a 3D shape. And you wanna go ahead and click 20 millimeter as well. So now if you go over here and look at your shape, now you have a uh, 3D 20 by 20 millimeter cube. So that was really simple. Took no time at all. Now, next thing you wanna do is go ahead and file, export. You wanna export it as an STL file. So we'll go on the bottom one, STL file, cube version O. I'll stick with that. So go ahead and export it. So it's the Creality Slicer, which is a program that make, or the company that ends, makes Ender 3. Now calibrate version one. So there we go. Cube has mated. And now it says it's gonna take 30 minutes. All right, so I got the printer getting warmed up. Now we'll just come back when the cube is done and we'll measure the results. All right, moment of truth. It's important that we keep track of what side of the cube was what because that is how we are going to be basing our measurements on. T4. Top. One of the cool things about my printer is that it has a detachable bed. So it's magnet, magnetized to the bed. 
and it's just so awesome because all you have to do is take it off just like that here we have the cubed mark um, the T is for top and the arrow points towards the front so as you can see this right here is going to mark our Z axis this right here our <clears throat> x-axis and this right here our y-axis okay and that is important to keep in mind when we do this first one we're going to measure is our uh, x-axis okay all right there we go so our y-axis is the most that is off we also have our x-axis that I guess it could be tinkered with a little bit the z-axis 0 0.5 0 0.05 millimeters is actually not too bad the next thing you need to do is go over here to your ender 3 pro and go where it says control now motion is where you want to go and steps per millimeter okay that's how you control how far your ender 3 pro is going to go uh, 80.00 steps per millimeter. This is how you're gonna solve it. Currently, we have 80 steps per millimeter times 20 millimeters, which is what uh, the cube should have been. And then we're gonna equal that by X, which is going to be the steps per millimeter that should be times 19.9, which is what we actually got. So what we're really saying here is that this needs to equal to this. And since 19.9 is what we got, we're going to adjust the steps per millimeter. And when you do the math, you're going to get 80.4 steps per millimeter. So that's what you're going to go ahead and put into your Ender 3 Pro. And we're going to go ahead and do that. Steps per millimeter. And go to your steps per millimeter. And then you want to go ahead and put 80.4. 80.4 there we go and then you want to go ahead go over here where it says uh, control store settings all right store these settings that way uh, when you turn your printer back on it's already going to be ready for you or already calibrated and you can keep calibrating as much as you can so I'm gonna go ahead and do the math for the remaining two axes uh, go ahead and input those into the Ender 3 Pro print another cube and then we'll see the outcome of that and I went ahead and inputted that into the printer so now our motions are in there and I'm gonna go ahead and store the settings and now I'm gonna go ahead and print another cube and we'll see how it comes out. All right, so moment of truth. I kind of messed up and forgot to mark it before I removed it from the print bed. Big mistake because now, um, I mean, I know which the exact, which Z axis, which I know what the Z axis is, but X and Y, now I'm just lost. But anyways, as long as it measures better than before, I guess that's all we're going for now. So here we go, Z-axis. Um, 20.01 compared to before 20.05. So we have an improvement there. We have successfully calibrated our N3 Pro to a smaller margin of error. It's still not perfect, but I was not expecting it to. Well, I hope you guys liked the little mini tutorial that I did. Hope you guys got something out of it and uh, maybe come out with a better explanation of how to calibrate your own printer. Remember, uh, most important thing that you would need is a well calibrated tool. A ruler could possibly make things better depending on how bad your printer is. However, it's not gonna be as accurate as being able to use a calibrated tool that way you can make more precise adjustments to your printer. I will put an affiliate link of this little measuring tool that I got from Amazon. And uh, I might as well put a link to the printer if you guys do decide to get one. 
Um, it's done you well, and I got it for less than 200 bucks. I think they're at 200 or maybe lower. There's possibly a sale going on. They always have sales. But anyways, hope you guys like this video. Um, hit that like button, subscribe if you can, want, or get anything out of this. Uh, I'm gonna, like I said, try to make videos simpler so it's easier for me to post. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Later.